question is why uh, why we need uh, more than just the uh, error value returned by syscalls. And the problem is that we have uh, lots of places where we just return e, uh, inval and uh, it, it just doesn't mean anything. Like uh, an, an example of what this was the previous uh, issue with the um, mount where we really need some more details details about what happened. And uh, sometimes it's just like I'm, I'm uh, debugging uh, a kernel file system and I, I want to know where an error was generated uh, and, uh, and I can't reproduce the problem. So I'd like a user to um, report where 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 did, where did that uh, error that he got came from? So Strace is a really nice tool for uh, debugging these sort of thing, things. So I uh, um, ideally um, I'd like to see something in Strace, and uh, it, uh, I think it's not difficult to do. And uh, the other one is uh, that. Uh, uh, Tracing these things is, is often, the user user is often uh, not uh, able, but, uh, or not, uh, 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 it's easier for, for uh, uh, debugging something without having to uh, uh, be uh, rude to do this. So, usual uh, things to do is, is uh, Having messages in uh, DMS, DMS when when uh, there's uh, we, we want to pass something um, from the kernel, but uh, that's that's not ideal for for debugging. Um, for for the mount stuff, uh, there's the uh, FS open file descriptor, and um, as Dave uh, mentioned, there's ftrace which is, uh, can be useful for um, uh, tracing the source of uh, certain errors. So ftrace, uh, is, uh, it's pretty difficult to use. The trace of fashion interface is, is really uh, uh, hard. Um, trace CMD is uh, sort of, that, that's, that's uh, user-friendly. Uh, thing, but it it uh, doesn't yet support the um, uh, return value. Um, so, but it there's something in the works apparently. Um, and uh, for tracing errors, uh, it would be really nice if F trace uh, would filter out only uh, negative return values. But it still needs root. Um, and it's uh, and it's global in scope. So uh, uh, those two reasons, it's uh, it's uh, difficult to integrate with uh, Strace. So Strace friendly would be something like um, storing a marker or descriptor um, in current when the error is generated. It's uh, not. It's not performance sensitive since uh, uh, if we know it's an error, then it's, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't happen very often. And uh, one question is whether this should be a stable KABI, so whether the messages generated should, should be stable, or um, can it be just like um, something like a file uh, and line number? Uh, source source file and file number because that would would not be stable obviously. So I, I uh, looked at uh, the ptrace interface. There's just uh, uh, there's a room for for um, error message in the exit uh, uh, syscall in for 55 bytes, which which is uh, quite enough for for uh, displaying something useful. So I, I uh, did something uh, trying to redefine uh, the uh, 
error um, macros that actually uh, would uh, automatically record uh, the, the file and the line number. Um, there were quite a lot of problems with uh, so most most of the cases are okay, but uh, but since there are so many errors, um, it, it, uh, there are uh, quite a few um, exceptions, like the uh, case cases switch case, like when it's uh, it's in a, a table, um, because in that case it, it uh, would have to be. Uh, it, it, can, it can't be uh, a macro that uh, that calls a function or stores something in the current, obviously. And uh, like in conditional expressions, that would be um, uh, like uh, those would have to be um, manually fixed as well because uh, they would be false positives. So it, it, those are not not really uh, error conditions. And uh, there are quite a few places where we have this um, pattern of uh, resetting the error before we check for, um, for, for the error condition. And then those would be also false positives. See, so the alternative is to manually add uh, these trace points or uh, descriptors like um, um, replacing with the just the return value with a air trace macro or um, uh, an air trace condition a conditional macro which which um, uh, records the error only if if it's uh, uh, if it's an error or we could have something that returns a, a, a string detail. problem with this is that it would have to, would have to be added uh, manually and uh, it, uh, uh, it somewhat obfuscates the uh, code and uh, it would be a big churn if, if we were trying to do this in, in one go. I'm not sure. The, there, there's one, uh, you probably have a sus subsystem you maintain and you are interested in things that are in your your subsystem so the churn is not i mean it's lo it's localized to the person of interest yeah so, so i'm not sure so um is this useful would it would this be this be useful um uh would this have to be a stable uh abi um those are the questions the, ref the refactoring seems like a job for Cox and L. Yeah. Cox and L, Julia Lal. Uh, I also had a, a different approach that I demoed at Plumbers like a year and a half ago and I finally got the infrastructure, infrastructure I need uh, about to be merged because that's for memory allocation profiling. Uh, it's, it's similar to your error trace macros except instead of adding a trace point, my approach just defines a whole bunch of error codes. And we dynamically allocate the error codes, and the error codes encode a file and line number. And then at the user space boundaries, we have to convert back to standard error codes. Um, yeah. I, I, I like this approach. I'm not sure which is better, but I wanted to throw it out there. The one, the one question I would have is that, I mean, if you have a, one subsystem calling another subsystem and the, the middle one sets a trace message, you lose the original informa information. I mean, the nice thing about F trace graph is that you, you get the call stack. Like, you can see actually what called what and so on and so on all up the way up. I guess you can't, I mean, it would be even more space to store things like that. But I mean, it, I personally, when I'm debugging a problem, I usually end up looking at the entire call tr stack to see what actually happened as opposed to just, yeah. I hit this one line. Yeah. Like, it's, this is more useful than just E in Val, but I mean, if it's for debugging, I mean. Also, tra trace points are something else that we have to, you have to know to go look in, the, in your trace points. They don't show up. This, this wouldn't change our log messages. Uh, the, if, 
The slick thing about my approach is that string to error then includes not just E and val, but it includes file and line number where that E and val was generated. Yeah. If you're going to have a, a static buffer to copy the uh, the error text into for each process so that Ptrace can pick it up, just don't copy a thing in there if the first if it, there's already a message in. Yeah. Uh, and then each once I, it's been picked up, we just clear I the first byte. I, I feel like there's going to be collisions either way and lost information. Yeah. I, I can't prove that. But I, I would just go with the first error generally. Yeah. But it's some, for something like inval, which is of use. How do you know when the first error is consumed? Well, you can always reset it if, if it's handled in sight by. Yeah. yeah. That's something we have to do manually. Yeah. But you're going to have to do it manually anyway. Because File name and path, which is generally of less use to the user than an actual "this is what went wrong" type string. Yeah, I, I think I, I saw your requirements on the first slide, but I think I'm still sort of missing what some of the use cases are. Right, the fact that we're talking trace points, it sounds like we're talking something where a developer is actually going to be getting involved in the first place, um, and. If you are talking, so the next question is, is this something where you are assuming that um, you can assume that you have a you know, specially compiled debug kernel, or is this something that you want to actually get out there so that you know, a future Red Hat Enterprise Linux kernel has all of this infrastructure uh, in place, and if you want to debug on a customer kernel, you can enable these things, right? Because all of these alternatives have different trade-offs depending on when you think it want to be used, when you think you want to use it, and what kind of overhead is considered acceptable. Um, and it's not clear to me um, how many of these use cases or which one of the use cases uh, we're actually trying to address. And maybe it would be helpful if we could actually establish that first. And with my user space hat on, like I. I don't want to have to run S trace or look at trace points for any of this. I'd like to just get it from like stir error, like Kent suggested. Like I just want, I call it mount or k exec file load or whatever stupid thing that can fail with a million different e invals, and I want to just be able to printf. That's why it failed without running S, S trace. Well, right, but th this again goes to so what is the use that's case, another right? Because um, we we talked about this earlier um, when we were talking about what sort of errors would be sent back via the FS open error info where we want something which is user friendly and you know if you want to send a hex dump maybe that should be going to D message and not out through FS open because the user doesn't want to see a hex dump right so again depending on the use case you may want more fine grained information that's helpful for the user in which case FS open is the right answer uh, at least for mount um, if it's what a de uh, developer is trying to do, then it's a different use case, right? So I, I imagine that this is for for developer, but but like for uh, remote debugging uh, cases. That, that's that, that's what what I I've, I've um, uh, experienced uh, most. So that that's that's my use case. Um, but I guess it, it could be useful for for. Um, uh, returning uh, details to the application. I, I think we do so need to be thinking about uh, end user debugging. Uh, developers just do the debugging when projects are in the early stages. But for a maintainer, I do a lot of debugging, uh, just interacting with users over IRC, over email, over bug reports. Uh, anything that adds extra tools, extra steps, like Dragon is a total non-starter for me. I focus heavily on introspection that's always available, and I would want that in this too. So I, I, I want this to make our generic error messages better. If we're printing out an error code, let's print out as much information as we can right there. So that that's a question that I have. If this is the problem, uh, I'm guilty of uh, adding a function that adds like four new invals. So over the lifetime of my kernel development involvement, I probably add, added 50, I don't know. Um, 
And uh, every time I keep thinking when I'm returning it, should I like do have a PR info or PR error string and so on? Usually I don't do it because like it has been traditionally frowned upon where people were like, ah, no, don't print it out, just return the, 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 uh, the error value. If it was for me, like if I did it in user space, there would be a PR info everywhere on every return value that you could look at in D message if you enabled the, the log level. But it's a, it's a question of whether when I send a patch set that has technical discussions and then somebody, Christopher would probably tell me take out all of these PR info things. That's just noise, for example. I mean, I, I wanted to ask. Maybe we can look at it from a, a s slightly different point of view. Uh, not users that program with uh, a return value. Pro users that program with libc with Erno. So libc is responsible of setting Erno, right? Uh, that's most of the programmers would use Erno, and they would use STR error. How can we provide libc with a way to get STR error without even changing Erno? Just the kernel would set write the uh, error, uh, the string to some memory that libc can read, and. We, we would need a different we use, uh, solution with the user space boundary because new error codes are not going to be ABI stable. Uh, this is also something that, uh, like adding new error codes, is something that I've actually done in BcacheFS, and it's been enormously useful. Uh, in in BcacheFS, there's a whole tree of error codes, and I, I try to only throw a distinct error code in one place, and then, like we were talking about, string error prints out the full error code, and on the module boundary, I have to convert back to standard error codes. Uh, what this really helps a lot with is, like you were saying, Christian, uh, where do you stick the log message? Oftentimes, you don't want to log the error where the error is generated because maybe it's handled. Uh, this way, you can return an error code further up the stack to where you do know that you want to uh, want to log it, and you've got all the relevant information. It makes your log messages so much better. In, in terms of an actual mechanism, uh, it, could, it could have something in the vsys couple, so not vsys, vdso, to yeah, get yeah. back at a string. Oh, yeah. Or, or we, we give... The error string uh, could be in the, the vdso or, section. Or, or give uh, the user space registers with a kernel a list of one per thread uh, st string buffers yep. for the kernel. Yep. Yeah, and again, this depends on what you're doing, right? Because we have also heard some people say, I want all of the intermediate low-level error strings. I don't want the high-level error string to be overwritten once we've figured out whether or not we've retried it, right? And that is one use case, right, where you only want the high-level error because that's what's actually going to be intelligible to the user as opposed to, oh, this memory allocation failed, but don't worry, I actually fixed it up. You don't want that. But if you're a, de if you're a developer, maybe you do want to get that sort of very, very detailed trace point debugging, right? So again, this is where fine-grained understanding of the use case is important. Sometimes you want all of those low-level error descriptions, and in fact, in that case, what the typical thing that we do is we have a way of saying, you know, turn on PR debug, and you have lots of debugging oh, messages. Oh, in yeah. that case, <laughs> add, Just the sure, one, right. Just the yeah, so, so, you know, again, if that's what we're doing, we have PR debug already, and maybe we shouldn't be trying to reinvent that. If what yeah. we're talking about is getting one, you know, more detailed information to user space, that's a different problem. Yeah. And I'm, I think we're trying to solve both problems at the same time, and that may be complicating our discussion. <laughs> there, there, there is also an added complication in that we can get error messages from a remote source. So, so it's the network file systems. So, that, this might make it easier to deal with. Yeah, put it right up to your mouth. All right, is that better? Yeah. Yeah, we, we also have uh, another issue inside a kernel where we can get errors from a remote source. 
network file systems, for example. But that might make things a bit easier. Or well, th this mechanism or something like it may make things a bit easier because we can tell the user we got some other error, some abort code or something from the server. And it's not a local error. I think we're out of questions then.